Hey everyone, we're here at CitizenCon, just spoke to Chris, now talking to Sean Tracy. Awesome. Before getting to that, all this coverage is brought to you by Antec and their new Cube MITX case as designed by Razer, which is shown on the screen now, supports full custom loop water cooling. You can learn more in the link below. So how's it going, Sean? Uh, I'm excited. I was, I was super nervous, you know, for the demo. We're always excited to, to show it off to the community. But again, it's kind of like, a, it's kind of like an investor meeting almost, right? <laughs> like, I mean, we're going in, we're showing them what all their, all their support has really allowed us to, to do. But I think it was, uh, it was a really exciting demo. We we're just super happy to show the Planet V2 stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the, the big thing I noticed was. Obviously, Planet V2, we just talked about like two weeks ago. That's right, that's right. And I'd been working uh, pretty late night hours uh, when, we had, we, when we had first talked about it. But uh, yeah, we were working exactly on this, uh, on this Homestead demo as well as the little tech demo afterwards. And so Homestead, just to kind of recap what was mm -hmm. there, it was all types of biomes and things. We, it wasn't that's just right. like a single biome. So what we saw in the demo, were those actually the biomes in action? That's exactly the biomes in action, right. Um, so the cool part about it is that there's a referencing system within it. So I mean, as we tweak the biomes, right, we can update them, uh, we can apply the update across the whole planet, we can go paint down the update if we need. Um, so yeah, those were a couple of them, and the whole idea of the very long fly-in was to show you just a huge amount of ecosystems that we're hitting already. Um, so, and then uh, even later on in that, in that other tech demo, we wanted to show some exotic ecosystems, because we're not just making Earth, we're not just making Mars, we're making all kinds of crazy planets. And some of that bleeds into what we were talking about previously with uh, edge blending, right? Is that yeah, that's it? right. Uh, edge blending. Um, so uh, the, the <laughs> it's funny, the Germans right now, I keep calling it super palm, but they hate that. Um, so I mean, this is the per pixel accurate edge blending on the edge. Um, so when objects are actually placed into the terrain, they look like they are part of the terrain. There's no hard edge on it. So again, I keep calling it super palm because this parallax occlusion mapping that we use, actually, uh, we have access to it in the depth buffer. And usually uh, with uh, parallax occlusion, and you don't. So they, they've gotten into the depth buffer so that they can actually do this per pixel edge blending on every single object that's placed within that terrain. Um, and it always looks pretty much seamless. It's super nice. Um, and I've never seen anybody do something like this before. We as gamers have just gotten used to the stuff plopped around in these objects and it's all cut very, you know, obviously. But uh, yeah, I hope we've fixed that. Yeah, well, I also saw so the the visual popping of the objects sure. seems pretty good, like pretty distant, which is a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. Can you talk at all about that, or what, what are you guys doing on that that front? Sure, um, Ali, um, our graphics programmer out, out in the UK, um, was really the chief architect of rebuilding and, and refactoring the CryEngine LOD system. So it was really worked. Uh, it worked really well for the Crisis games because of the ranges and things. But uh, like you saw, our ranges here are way beyond anything that that, that a Crisis game would ever do. So some of the refactors he's made is making it based a little less on distance and more on uh, how many polys per pixel you end up drawing at certain distances. So I think we've really, and, and this has taken a lot of iteration and a lot of work on the asset side, a lot of work on the programming side to just get that ratio perfect, right? And even still, right, there was a little extra popping on the trees that we're not happy with and things like this. But we take that super seriously because it's, it's, it's jarring. Uh, when you're flying into an area and bop, 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 <laughs> everything comes in. Um, so we've got dissolves between LODs, we've got the per pixel, uh, 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 how big, um, how, how many polys are per pixel anyways, because you can't draw anything more than, uh, you know, four. Um, that's what NVIDIA is recommending. So, um, yeah, uh, there's some pretty exciting things that had to change to make that possible, definitely. And then one other item that I noticed in the demo was uh, you guys got into the rover at one point, yeah. rover on the surface. So a pretty cool thing, anyone who saw the demo, we'll have it on our channel if you didn't see it, but the uh, the wheels of the rover were conforming to the surface of the planet. That's right. So is that real-time physics or what's... That is completely real-time physics, yeah. And we use a spring system for it, so we have a spring and IK system built into it. And what's super interesting about it is we're applying it to the landing gear now. Mm. So that one's a little more complex. It, it's an... It, it's conceptually the same idea, uh, but you've got a set of springs, you've got a set of IK joints, and basically you're controlling how much they're springing, how much the tension there is on them, how far they can extend. And we try, you know, there was a there was a shot of the Connie coming and landing, and we worked on this for the Connie for this particular demo. But one of the hardest things with the ships is that when they're landing, they kind of bounce around in these things. So it's giving this nice soft landing gear so that when you land, you have that 
compression within the landing gear. So it's the same sort of stuff that's going on on the wheels uh, uh, for the rover. And again, you saw that as you're going over physics terrain. Yeah, those are popping around and everything. What's nice is it actually gives us better traction too, because the, the the tires actually drive the vehicle. So right. as they're more contactful with the ground, it's just it drives a lot better. So, so does it go so it as deep helps. as more more tires touching the ground? It was what a six wheel vehicle. Six wheel vehicle. We can do as many as we like. Um, yeah, I think I think old CryEngine was restricted to something like sixteen. Uh, I don't think we've actually tried to do one with more than six, but I can't say no because you've seen this game. It just gets okay. bigger and bigger. So, so then the the question I have, the follow up is, if you, it sounds like what you're saying is the more wheels contacting or more tires contacting the ground, the better your acceleration. Is uh, that well, actually? the better it drives, the more control you have. Okay. Uh, we set uh, we set which wheel is the drivable wheel, uh -huh. and I think actually on that rover only the two center ones are drivable or are, are driving wheels. Mm -hmm. So basically, they apply all the all the uh, all the torque and everything. So yeah, it could drive a lot better. Uh, absolutely. Right. Yeah. Very cool. So uh, more information, as stated before, in the article link in the description below. Awesome. We'll have all kinds of stuff. Thank you, as always, Sean. Hey, thanks. <laughs> we'll all see right. you all next time.